And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, inside another a special edition of WMUA Sports. Josh McCauley alongside my roommate, Mike Niddle. Mike, how you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So we have a very special presentation for you folks tonight. Mike and I, I guess the resident NBA experts, are going to break down this upcoming NBA draft. The draft is this Thursday night, so we're going to go through the entire first round, all 30 picks, and we are going to, I guess, call them as we see them. Right, Mike? Exactly how it goes. No trade. Exactly. All right, so we will start at the top or I guess the bottom, because it's the worst team in the league. The Minnesota Timberwolves won the draft lottery first time in, I believe, eight or nine years that the worst team in the league has actually won the lottery. So Minnesota has the right to pick number one. And, Mike, I think you and I are going to have the same picks for probably the top four and uh, maybe even a little bit after. I think the the top of this draft is pretty much set. But, uh, Mike, why, why don't you start us off with, who is going number one in your, in your book? I mean, so I think it's got to be obvious. I think I'm going to put Carl Anthony Towns, your boy from New Jersey, going first to the Timberwolves. I think that he's just too big, too powerful, and I think that he, he has more potential than Jaleel Okafor. So even though I love Duke, I'm still going Carl Anthony Towns from Kentucky. Yeah, and uh, I'm also going Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, the Timberwolves have all but told him he's going number one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Number two, there's apparently a little bit of controversy. Uh, the Lakers are on the, the clock number two, and reportedly they're, they're looking at a couple different options. Mike, who do you have going number two to uh, Tinseltown? Um, so bot- bottom line, either one, two, it's going to be Towns or Okafor. So if I have Towns going one, Okafor is definitely going number two. He, he's, his back-to-the-basket skill is absolutely insane. So i got to go with Okafor. Yeah, uh, a lot of people have been saying D'Angelo Russell is an option here. The Lakers have looked at him. I, I don't. What think is that? Is option. that is what? that just as is that just as Kobe's retiring? You know, I I don't know. Um, from what I know, the Lakers like Jordan Clarkson, their second round pick last year. He had a very good rookie season. He was probably the steal of that draft. Um, the Lakers' plan going forward is add Kevin Love next offseason or this offseason, and then add Russell Westbrook the year after. So I don't understand why they would they, – they're not going to draft a franchise point guard here. It's it's right. Julio it's Julia Loco for him and Julius Randle down low is going to be great. Uh, they're going to add Kevin Love. I think that's a given. And either they stay with Jordan Clarkson or Mitch Kupchak goes in size, Rajon Rondo. So D'Angelo Russell's not going number two, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's Okafor. He's you – know, regardless – And I have – I absolutely no, see Rondo. I absolutely see Rondo going to the Lakers. I think that him and Kobe would be perfect together. Oh, Two absolutely! Arrogant, arrogant little ball hog craps. Actually, Rondo isn't a ball hog. He just is terrible at everything. He's, he's just, he's just terrible. Passing. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I, so I had one and two were in agreement. Number three. This is actually where it gets it gets interesting. I think you and I might have the same picks, but uh, a lot of NBA experts are not sure. Uh, it's the 76ers. Uh, we know they're kind of a hoarder of big men. Last year, uh, Embiid, who is yet to play, might miss next season as well. They got yep. some some European guy that stashed. We know they have Noel. Uh, Niddle, who is – who's Sam, uh, Sam Hickey going to take here? Or whatever his name uh, is. I don't even care. He sucks. <laughs> they're all terrible. It doesn't matter. Um, I see them going guard um, just as like they went with Carter Williams. They're going to take D'Angelo Russell. I think that he has the best upside out of all the guards, and they need a guard. They need every single position, actually. So start with a guard and see what you can do with that. So they're going to go D'Angelo. they got to go D'Angelo Russell. Yeah, I mean, you have to think that trading Michael Carter-Williams was, was giving up on him idea. that early. But you have to think giving up on him that early was them getting ready, but either Russell or Moody Eye, which, whichever one they had their, their choice of. You have to think it's for a point guard. I think they're taking D'Angelo Russell. Uh, to, to not do it is, is stupid. Right. Noel, Noel wasn't a hit. Noel is still an eh. We don't know yet. And Bede hasn't played yet. The guy in Europe is still in Europe for another couple of years. The Sixers need an actual NBA player. They need a home run. D'Allen Jolo Russell has the chance to be the best player in this draft. I, there's no question he, in my I, mind. It's safe, it, it's safe to say he has the best upside out of everybody. Absolutely. I, there's no question in my mind they take him. 
Uh, now, number four, my team, the Knicks. If they get this wrong, well, I like fit, fit, our friend Brennan Fitzpatrick, who you all know, listeners, review, I guess viewers, because they can see us. When the Rangers lost game seven, he said, I should go on suicide watch. If the Knicks <laughs> mess this pick up, I should go on suicide watch because there's one guy they need to take. There's one guy who fits the triangle perfectly. Niddle, I want to know if he's the guy you have going to the Knicks. Who do you have at number four to New York? Well, if I'm going to be straight up, I think the Knicks are going to trade. Uh, I think they're going to trade back because – I think that once if they don't get Jaleel, if Jaleel doesn't fall to number four, I think that they're definitely going to trade the pick. But if they keep it, if they keep the pick, Justice Winslow out of Duke, small forward, I have Winslow going to the Knicks. Wow. I agree with you. They might trade back. I know they're talking to the Suns about the number four pick for Eric for Bledsoe, Bledsoe yeah. and a number 13 yeah. pick, which – is okay. Bledsoe doesn't fit the triangle, and that means they're going to make a run for Kaminsky, who might not be there at 13 or 11. Um, so that's risky, but we're not having trades in this. Niddle and I talked about it. We said we said no. Yeah, there's just, yeah, there's yeah. just way, too, way too many variables. That's too, many, that's too complicated for us. If the Knicks take Justice Winslow, put me on suicide watch because that is <laughs> possibly the worst pick for this team. He is a nice complimentary player. He's probably – at his peak, going to average 11 or 12 points and five rebounds a game and play suffocating defense. The problem with the Knicks is he's, there's no one for him to compliment. He's, right. It's not going to work. Melo should be your small forward in the trying is not your power forward. If the Knicks do not take Chris Tapps, Porzingis, anyone else, including Russell, put me on suicide watch. He fits the triangle perfectly. He's 7-1, plays suffocating defense. He's a knockdown shooter. He's lights out from three-point range. He is a good Andrea Bargnani. He is what Andrea Bargnani was supposed to be. If they do not take Porzingis, I will be I will be so pissed. I will fucking hate Phil Jackson for the rest of my life. Take Porzingis. He's perfect okay. for the Knicks. I see you. I see you. That that was that was uh, a little bit a uh, little rough there, huh? I've been looking at these mock drafts that have that a lot of them have Philly taking Porzingis, and I I don't want them to like I don't want anyone but Porzingis. Porzingis is exactly what the Knicks need, and if now, Phil messes up, potential that Porzingis is a bust. I, I he's not Darko. He's not Darko. Darko was potential to be a knockdown shooter. Porzingis has shown he's a knockdown shooter. Darko wasn't seven foot one. I mean, even even if he can't score like we think he can, if he averages 11 points and nine rebounds and plays good defense in the post, that's fine because you didn't get one of the top guys. There's no other power forward in this draft who's going to do that. Maybe Kaminsky, maybe, but he's not justifiable at number four. Neither right. is Willie Cauley-Stein. So if you're, if you're telling me you have to take someone who's justifiable at number four, if – the only way I'll be okay if they don't take Porzingis is if Porzingis is already off the board, which means Philly and, would take him. And you know, if Porzingis is already off the board, then you get one of those top four, top three guys that we were already talking about. If he's so, off the board, take D'Angelo Russell, and maybe you can swing a trade. But Russell doesn't fit the triangle. So if Porzingis is off the board, I would rather they 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 pull the trigger on the Bledsoe trade, or they pull the trigger with Indiana and get Roy Hibbert. He's an idiot, but he's a big body. <laughs> I, I don't know. Or maybe you try to trade because apparently the Lakers are trying to go get uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Maybe we can pull a trade for DeMarcus Cousins. Um, I don't know. I, th but I think I, I'm going to be straight up. I think the Celtics are going to find a way to get DeMarcus Cousins. I, I, I don't know. I hear the Lakers are getting close to offering the number two pick for him, which shows. Which, should take, which they should take. By the which way. they should, which just shows that Okafor's stock is falling. There are a lot of people who think he's going to fall to the Knicks. Yeah. I think the Lakers would be crazy to do that, but the. At number four, the old Porzingis. If he's not on the board, trade back. It's Porzingis or bust. He's the perfect for he's perfect for this offense. He's he's perfect. So at number five, we have the Orlando Magic, who yet again who have never been able to find their stuff together after getting rid of uh, Dwight Howard. So, but they have a little good of a baseline now. They have. Um, I can't think of the whole baseline. They got Vucevic, Oladipo, Aaron Gordon, and, Alfred Payton. See, that's it's a good young team. It's they a need good a couple. Team. They need a couple of veterans to get in there to lead the team, as we all know that always helps. Um, 
as as much as I would love for them to like tr- trade and get. I bottom line, I just want Joe Wallace off the Celtics. By the way, anyways, um, anyways, I think that I think this is the point where the the magic will go to Porzingis. I think that they need another big man. Um, and as you were just talking so highly highly of him with the Knicks, I think he can do the exact same thing with the Magic. And I think that the problem with this is, as I said, they don't have a veteran to help Porzingis. Right. Other than that, I think that no matter where he goes, the Latvians, what is he, 7'1", 220, something like that? 7'1", 220. He's 19. It's at, he has the utmost potential in the world. So I think wherever he goes, he'll be good. But I have him going number five. I heard that the Magic are so in love with Porzingis that the Sixers are trying to see if they can get an asset or two out of them to 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 move to switch spots. Because if the Sixers aren't sold on Russell and they're okay with letting him fall to the Knicks, which if Russell's there, the Knicks are taking him. Like end of discussion. Right. Um, there there are talks that the Magic love Porzingis so much they might be willing to swap first round picks and throw in an asset or two to leapfrog New York and switch with Philly to go get Porzingis but we're not putting trades in this um you already mentioned Justice Winslow I think Justice Winslow as a complimentary piece would be perfect alongside Oladipo and Aaron Gordon and Vucevic and then you go get your veterans in free agency because you're not going to get a veteran in the draft that's not how the draft works I think Justice Winslow would fit very very nicely with Orlando. See, here's my problem with Justice Winslow on Orlando. When I look at Justice Winslow, I see him more as a slasher than anything. And with that, Oladipo, Aaron Gordon, all of them, well, I know Aaron Gordon's down low, but Oladipo is a slasher by himself. So I think that you need a shooter in one of those. And I think that Porzingis might even be a better shooter than Winslow outside or with a deep two because I think Oh absolutely. That... I think he's definitely a better shooter. I'm just I don't think he's gonna be there. I don't he's not okay. getting past either Philly or New York, he's not getting past the fourth pick. Someone's gonna take him. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. But either way, I think that the the slashing mentality of Winslow that he absolutely graced Coach K with his fifth title with. I think that that's not going to work out well with the Magic. But, hey, if it does, I'll be happy with it. Or, I mean, maybe the Magic just go for best available and they flip them to go get one of those veterans like you mentioned. I, who's the coach? Did they, did Orlando hire a coach yet? Um, I don't know, actually. Let me check. So I don't even know whose system. I Are they holding out for Thibodeau or did they – I don't even know what they did. Because uh, I, I think – I think they did hire a coach. Because uh, I know Mike Malone got the Denver job. George Carl's in Sacramento. Scott's, no. Scott, Scott, Scott Skiles? Scott's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, is Thibodeau just not going to coach next year? Because Alvin Judge I think he's taking the year off. He's taking the year off because there's nowhere else to go. Jeez. Sorry, Tom. Thanks. All right. So um, – since we mentioned Sacramento with George Carl, they have the sixth pick. Uh, for now, if they trade um, Cousins, they could pick at four. They could pick at two. But right now, they're at six. So, Mike, who who is going out to uh, Sacramento? Um, I think me and probably 99% of this world agree on the fact that it's going to be Emmanuel Mude. Um, wow, I guess I'm, I'm the 1% then. Apparently. Um, he's the point guard. He's technically out of China, um, but he's like fr- he's American playing in China. He didn't want to go to college, so he went to China, played a few years there, coming back to America in the draft. And I think that that's who they're going to go with because I think that, well, first of all, anything that the Kings can get help with, they're going to need. And I think that M- Mude has a lot of potential. He's very young. It's a, I'd say it's almost a risk reward type thing. You take the risk on him. He comes to play for you and he's good. You, it's great. If he's bad, you trade him. That's about it. So it's either that or they, I think that's about it for Mude. I think that's where the uh, Kings will take him. I, I don't see a fit for him on the Kings because they gave Darren Collison a long term deal. They're not ready to give up yet on Nick Stoskis because they use a top 10 pick on him, whether or not he was worth it. I don't think he was. I don't know if George Carl wants another point guard. I think 
what they want is more interior defense because there's no one next to DeMarcus Cousins. I think this is the perfect fit for Willie Cauley-Stein because Cousins has shown he can play power forward. Could you imagine the twin towers of Cauley-Stein and Cousins if Cousins stays in Sacramento? That is terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. And Cauley-Stein is justifiable at number six. See, I'm going to be honest. I don't think Cauley-Stein will do anything in, in the NBA. I think he's going to be a bust. I don't think he's going to score, but like scoring, 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 you have to be good. Defense translates from college to the pros a lot easier than offense. And you're seven feet tall. He's a great shot blocker. I think he's going to fit fine next to Cousins, who's an amazing defender in his own right. And he's not going to score. He doesn't need to. DeMarcus Cousins is going to drop 25 a night. So if he becomes a 10 and 10 guy, you're set. Okay. So if you take that point and they trade Boogie, where are they going to go? If they trade Boogie, then you then you still need a center. So I think either way, it's Carly Stein. He's either going to play next to Cousins, and that's scary, or he's going to replace Cousins, and they'll look in free agency for someone else. I, I just think at points, that's kind of too early for Cousins. Uh, not Cousins, um, Carly Stein. I just don't have a – I'm not big on Carly Stein. So I think that's too early for him. But it, as you said, it couldn't be a good fit. So either way. Anyways. Number seven, Denver Nuggets. Who you got? Uh, Ty Lawson's on the way out. He is. Uh, this is where I think Moody I goes. I think he's going to fit Mike Malone's offense. He is a slasher. He's going to get to the rim. He's going to do everything Lawson doesn't do. I, uh, Ty Lawson's out. Like Ty Lawson is checked out. Denver doesn't want him anymore. And even if they keep him, he's going to play shooting guard because they don't have a shooting guard. Um, I think Moody I makes a, a lot of sense in Denver. Um, and I think he's going to get past Sacramento. So I think Denver is either going to go best available or even best fit because I think he's best fit. I think Moody I will be in the mile high city. So here's what I'm thinking. As you said, I th- I, well, bottom line, I think if Winslow ever fell down to Denver, he would automatically go straight to, um, straight to Denver because I think they have a great connection Winslow and the Denver Nuggets. They, the Denver Nuggets love to met his workouts, everything like that. But I think if they can't somehow get Winslow whatsoever, um, Mario Hanzoja out of uh, – where is he? Latvia? Spain. Spain, whatever. So it's it's around the same area. Not, uh, not, not really. I, 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 I don't care. I, I just go by Europe. Is it in Europe? Is it in Europe? Yeah, Spain and Latvia are both in Europe. Latvia is in the Baltic, and Spain is – I would hope you know where Spain is. Um, no, I don't know where Spain is, but it's okay. Um, I kind of failed history in high school. No, I, I really do know where Spain is. Do not worry anybody. anybody. Wait, wouldn't that be geography? You know what? Never mind. Just never mind. Just, just go. <laughs> I with. never took a geography class. <laughs> just, just, say, just say your pick, please. Actually, he's from Croatia, by the way. Mario Hanzoja. Well, okay. Well, he was playing in Barcelona. Croatia. Whatever. From Croatia. I think he's going to go number seven. Shooting guard. I think that, as you said, Denver Nuggets have nobody in shooting guard. So, Hanzoja to the Nuggets. All right. Uh, we'll chug right along to a team that had a need and then filled it. The Pistons. Greg Monroe is on the way out. From what I understand, Greg Monroe has basically already become a Nick. Like, yeah, it's basically official. They just haven't signed on the dotted line yet. So he's gone. They went out and traded for Ersan Ilyasova, who got replaced in Milwaukee. So he's their stretch four now. He'll operate alongside Drummond, I think, very well. So there's one glaring hole in Detroit. I'm not going to say what it is. I want to see who you have going there, and we'll see if it fills that hole. See, I'm going to be honest. I have uh, Stanley Johnson, small Ford okay. out of Arizona. Um Small forward was a big hole for the Pistons, of course. So Stanley Johnson, I think that he's your next big available small forward. He's the best one available. And I think that um, he he's he's a good piece. He's going to be – I don't think he's going to be a star. I really don't, but I think he's going to be a good role player. He's going to be a good fit in that system. And I think that he, he'll just be a perfect fill-in for when Monroe leaves. See, I think – Stanley Johnson would be an amazing fit. Um, there's someone I see as a better fit. You already took him off the board. Um, I think his own goes here. He's six, eight. He's listed as a shooting guard, but he's played small forward before. He's a much better outside shooter 
than Johnson. And we all know Van Gundy's system is get the ball inside to Drummond and then kick it out because he plays the four out one in, which is why Josh Smith and uh, Greg Monroe never worked there. I think Hazonja is a better outside shooter. I think they can plug him in at small forward. And could you imagine him and Caldwell Pope on the court at the same time? Like it's, it's going to rain. It's going to rain in the palace all day. And that's awesome. I think Stanley Johnson's a good fit, but if his own just still on the board, like I think he will be, I would be remiss. It would, the Pistons would be remiss to pass on him in my opinion. All right. So number nine, I think that it, it, it would just be absolutely incredible if they can get two Kentucky players. Oh, by the way, uh, the Hornets are at number nine. I forgot yes. To <laughs> Tell completely us who was the pick first. Say, completely forgot to say who the pick was, but I have, a great Twin Towers idea right here. Just kidding. Not the Twin Towers. Um, I don't know why I was saying Twin Towers, but I have Kali Stein going to, uh, going to the Hornets. Um, I, I had like, the Pelicans. Who, who's the other tower? Like, <laughs> I had the Pelicans in my mind. <laughs> Sorry, my computer just fell. Um, I had the Pelicans in my mind with uh, um, Anthony Davis, so that would have been an issue. But oh well. Either way, I'm an idiot. Collie Stein, number nine, going to the Hornets. All right. Uh, I took Collie Stein off the board. Um, I don't think they're going to go power forward. I think they're fine with Al Jefferson and Bismack Biombo. Uh, with the trade of Lance, they've always needed outside shooting. With the trade of Lance Stevenson, it's even worse. Um, I do agree with you, though, that there will be a second Kentucky player taken in the top ten. I have Devin Booker going here. I think he's going to fill wow. their role on the wing. It is, it's a little bit of a reach, but at this point, the best players are off the board. You're going for fit here. If they were going for best available, I, they wouldn't go with Devin Booker, but I think he's the better fit for what they're doing down in Charlotte. So I, they could go somewhere else, but I think they're going to see Devin Booker is a very, very good fit there. And also I have Kyle Stein off the board at six, so I can't have him going again at number nine. Number 10, a team we're not used to seeing in the lottery. Um Someone already took his, his talents from South Beach. Someone else might be taking his talents from South Beach. Dwayne Wade, we're talking about you. By the way, Niddle, do, do, do you think he's leaving? Just like totally off topic. Do you think Dwayne Wade is leaving Miami? I think Dwayne Wade is leaving. He he would be an idiot to stay. I think he's leaving. I, I heard the Lakers, but I think he's going to go to Cleveland. I, would, I think he wants to be with LeBron again. Uh, but yeah, okay. We both think he's leaving. Um, so yeah, Miami, they've been, they were, at, they were in four straight finals and now they're with the 10th pick. Um, who do you have going to South Beach with Pat Riley and probably not Dwayne Wade? <laughs> um, I think that I'm going to go Miles Turner out of Texas. Um, I think that he's going to be a good piece behind Chris Bosh. Um, Chris Bosh, of course, coming off the season uh, where he he missed was it the whole season or most of the season or. He, he missed he missed a while with an ankle, and then he missed the last month with blood clots in his lung, which is yeah, really scary. So it is really scary. I, I would I would be very afraid. Anyways, um, I think that Miles Turner is going to go to the Heat. I think that he's going to be a good complimentary piece, especially as, uh, uh, beside Hassan Whiteside um, as they go into the future. I think the as you said, these are more fit in future pieces. I think he's going to be a good future piece. And um, so I think that that's just going to – I've seen him go up the draft boards a lot, and I think that Turner's going to make it to the number 10 pick. Uh, I think Turner will be taken very, very soon. He's actually my next pick. Um, I don't trust Lou Dang and his knees. I think Dwayne <laughs> Wade – bless you. I think Dwayne Wade will be gone. <laughs> bless you. Jeez, <sighs> stop. I think if Dwayne leaves, there's no way Goran Dragic resigns. Got two, three starters because I don't even, I don't even know if they'll bring Dang back. Bosch is there. Hassan Whiteside, I think is fine. I don't think they're going to take a power forward here. I think this is where Stanley Johnson comes in. I think he's a great piece to either come off the bench behind Luol Dang, or he'll play the small forward and Dang and move to shooting guard if Dwayne's gone, or maybe Dang doesn't come back at all. But I think. Stanley Johnson would be a nice pick here. And is, is he a freshman or is he a little bit older? I don't Johnson. Remember. Yeah. Um, I don't really know. Honestly, 
Because I know Pat Riley likes to take older players. But, you know, what? even if he's a freshman, like we said, it's about fit here. I think I think Stanley Johnson would fit the Heat well, but I think he'd fit them well enough that it's worth taking him at 10. Yep. So with the number – what are we at, 11, right? 11. 11. Indiana Pacers. These guys started out really hot again. Dwindled down, of course. But – um. They had my they had my coach of the year vote, like Frank Vogel. I if I had a vote, I'd vote for Frank Vogel. Like what he did with that team, had them in playoff contention till the end with like a dumpster fire of a team. That that was that's incredible. Okay, either way. Um, <laughs> see, this is where at this point, this is where I get into big small. Um, see, I. This is one. This is the main pick that I couldn't decide on, but I think I'm going to put. This is where I put Devin Booker out of Kentucky, uh, the shooting guard. I think that Rodney Stuckey. How many years does he have left? Do you know on his contract or like in his NBA career? Well, his NBA career should be zero. So yeah, no, I think he's got a year left on his deal. But yeah, he should be out of the league by now. Uh, um, but either way, I think that if um. If he's still there, I think that Devin Booker would be a good fit. I think that, it, it, as we said, shooting guard fit again. So that would just be perfect fit for him. All right. I heard rumors that Paul George is a power forward now. Is that is that a thing? Is he actually a power forward now? Because if he is, then I'm very confused. PG-13? Yeah. I heard I he's mean, a power I, forward. And I was I like, what? He's, no, he's not. I think he's, I think he's still a small forward. All right, um, Stucky is should be done. Um, if they don't take a center here, I will be, I will, <laughs> I don't even know what I'll do. I'll be shocked because uh, Roy Hibbert is the biggest idiot this side of JaVale McGee. He has no basketball <laughs> IQ. Frank Vogel's done with him. The PA announcer's done with him. The fans are done with him. I hit the Pacers and I'm done with him. This is where I think Miles Turner goes because they're just trying to get rid of uh, Roy Hibbert. They're going to squeeze what they have left out of David West. I think uh, to Turner, David West, PG-1-3, whoever they do, who, Bumblefuck, whatever, whoever they put at shooting guard, been Stucky, whatever, and then George Hill. I mean, the East sucks. They'll, they'll compete for the playoffs. I think Miles Turner is a good, a good building piece. I don't think they'll go I don't think they'll go shooting guard here. I think the, they're more inclined to do whatever they can to get Roy Hibbert off the court. And that's that's take a big man. There's there was another big man I was gonna put here, and I have him as the next pick, and I was so tempted to put him here, but uh, I like the fit of Miles Turner a little bit better. All right, so you said you have a big man next pick, huh? Big man next pick, yes. Going out to a Salt Lake, the Jazz on the board at what are we at number twelve, number twelve, Utah. We are. Hold on one second. One second. Do you want me to like say my pick while you're while you're looking? No. Um, I had a ad running in the background into my headphones, and it wasn't very pleasant on my ears. Oh, yeah, that, that would do it. <laughs> Anyways, right, so pick. What is Utah, it? Utah Jazz. I think they're gonna go with Frank the Tank. Um, I think that's gonna be a good fit for them. So, and especially. With his athleticism, his ability to shoot from the outside, I think that Frank the Tank, I'm not very high on Rudy Gobert, so I think they go Frank the Tank on this one. I have Frank the Tank as well. I think he's a great piece with Derek Favors and Gobert clogged the middle. They need a big man who can stretch the floor. As much as I didn't like Frank the Tank in college because I hate Wisconsin as a Michigan State fan, uh, he's he's perfect in Utah. I, I almost had Indiana taking him. I almost had Miami taking him. But uh, he's a perfect for Utah. And if he's there, there's no way they let him get by. And especially with such a young starting five with Gordon Hayward, Dante Exum, Trey Burke, that'll be a great time for this team to grow up together and improve together. And especially when you add Frank the Tank in there, I think that'll be a good good fit for them. Does Does Dante Exum count? Because he was really terrible. <laughs> like, does he I mean, count? <laughs> I'm gonna give him it because I think that he has a he still has potential no matter what. So, All right. Um, number 13 is – I can't read my handwriting. Is that is – that Phoenix, oh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix Suns. 
Um, all right, why don't you go first? Um, all right, well, Phoenix could go in a number in a number of ways. Apparently, they're trying to trade up to number four. They're trying to get rid of Bledsoe. They still have to re-sign Knight. Uh, I, what did I have? I had them. Where do I have them? Where is Atlanta? Where is Atlanta? Okay. No, Phoenix. What am I saying? Phoenix. Okay. I have them bulking up at small forward. Gerald Green is an unrestricted free agent. I don't know if they're going to bring him back. Phoenix is not in a position where they can, they can really dwell upon what they have to take because they have so many needs. They have too many point guards. They have to figure that out. I have them taking Kelly Obrey from Kansas. I think his stock has fallen during the season, but he's a nice, consistent role player who I think if they don't bring Green back, you can squeeze some quality minutes out of him. If they do bring Green back, he can sit on the bench and learn from him. I think he has the potential to do what Gerald Green does, which is come off the bench and be a volume microwave scorer. It's going to take a couple of years, but I think that, he would be a good guy to stash on your bench as you try to rebuild. So I have Kelly Obrey. I agree with you. I think I have Kelly Obrey as well. I think that he 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 can play, he can shoot, and he can drive all at the same time. He's not bad on the defensive side. So I'd say um, rounding out the lottery, I think that he could end up and be a good fit for this Phoenix Suns, young Phoenix Suns team, especially if Eric Bledsoe goes. It'll be very, very, very young. So that didn't round out the lottery. We still got one more. Oh, we're on number 13. I thought it was number 14. No, nope, well, we then one never more. mind. All right. Either way, Kelly Oubre almost rounding out the lottery. I have him going to the Phoenix Suns. Now, to round out the lottery, good segue. Have, there we go. There we go. Segways are great. Um, <laughs> the Oklahoma City Thunder. I absolutely have an issue with one of their players on the team. And I think that either one of the other, the star players, are going to be gone. So with such a rough season last year, with both of the star players hurt for most of the season, who do you have going to the Oklahoma City Thunder? Okay, well, first of all, in two years, Durant and Westbrook will both be gone. So Both be gone. I agree. Both be gone. Durant's going to be in – I don't even know. He'll probably be in D.C. He could be in New York. I have no freaking clue. And then Westbrook will be in uh, L.A., but they'll, they'll both be gone. Um but with Westbrook all, all, there, all of the all of the like really really annoying, arrogant players go to Los Angeles. You and Westbrook fits perfectly, and he could go reunite with his old college teammate in the place where they played college ball together. But that's beside the point. That's for two off seasons from now. Um, even going into next year, I understand they have Deion Waiters there. With the loss of Reggie Jackson, they're very very thin at point guard. And I understand Westbrook just went off, but Westbrook's also injury prone. And with Durant coming back, you're going to need a point guard who can actually play with Durant because guess what? Westbrook and Durant don't fit. That's why they haven't won a championship yet. That's why I don't like Westbrook. He's a detriment to that team. I have them taking a guy that Knicks, for some reason, are really high on, and I don't know why. Um, I have them taking Cameron Payne, the point guard out of Murray State. I think he can play with Durant. He's a good pick-and-roll guy. He fights to get to the rim. He'll fit well with Abaka and with Cantor, and he is a good guy who can spell Westbrook when Westbrook's either sitting uh, for rest or when he gets hurt because he always gets hurt and misses 10 games. So I have uh, Cameron Payne from Murray State at number 14 to round up the lottery. I have the exact same pick as you, Cameron Payne. I think that, yes, he has a little athleticism lacking, but I think the rest of the team can make up for that. He's a great passer. He has a great IQ. And I think that Cameron Payne will fit well into this backup role behind Russell Westbrook. Because, as we said, Russell Westbrook is injury prone. A, B, needs a break. And C, he's going to be gone in two years. So uh, Cameron Payne off to the Thunder. All right. Now we move on to the playoff teams. And this one, people will be like, wait, why are they picking there? They had like the second best record in the NBA. Uh, what happened from the Joe Johnson trade? The Hawks had the right to switch first round picks this year with the Nets. So the Hawks are picking at 15 despite winning 60 games. Who is going down to Atlanta, Mr. Mike Nettle? See, this is where I started questioning where I really wanted some players going. But I, I really – this is really a toss-up. It's either – I have two players in mind, to be honest. I think that Sam Decker – 
I think out of Wisconsin, he's he's a great outside shooter. I think as we've as we've seen throughout the college and uh, college tournament this year, I think that Sam Decker will be a good fit, especially because I'm not a big fan. I'm not really high in Damari Carroll to be honest. And um, Sam Decker and Kyle Korver on the wings can just rain can just rain threes, absolute splash. So I have Sam Decker going to the Hawks. I think Damari Carroll will be gone. I really think he's going to leave. I wouldn't be surprised. He's either going to New York or he's going to go to Portland because Wes Matthews went to New York. One of those is going to happen. Um, They have to worry about Paul Millsap because as much as Paul Millsap has bought in to the program under Mike Budenholzer, if someone comes and gives him more money in more years because we know the Hawks are a small market team. Very slim. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was gone. And even if he's still there, they, they gave up on Adrian Payne, in my opinion, way too early. They sent him to Minnesota for – I think they got a first-round pick, which is good for them. But uh, they gave up on him too early. They need a backup power forward. We all know Al Horford is injury-prone. They need a backup. They need someone who can play when either of them is resting. This is where I have Trey Lyles going. I think he's got a nice outside game, the 15- to 18-foot jump shot. I think he is a great backing down to the basket. He is, he's basically – Chris Stapp's poor Zingas, but not as lethal on offense. Uh, I think he's a great foot fit down there. He either can play with Millsap when Horford's sitting or with Horford when Millsap is sitting. I think he'd be a great fit under Budenholzer's system, and I don't think he's going to fall much further than this. I think he will be in Atlanta when it's all said and done. All right, so number 16, my boys, the Boston Celtics, who came off a uh, absolutely incredible end of the season last year. The team got rid of Rajon Rondo, got rid of Jeff Green, finally made it Brad Stevens' team, which we'll get to when we do the NBA pre- preview, season preview and everything like that. But um, yes, we will. I love this team. They're going They are going somewhere. Danny Ainge made a great, uh, great trade for um, Isaiah Thomas, and this team is starting to pan out. They need, they need, they need a star or a veteran on this team to take them to the next level. However, I think at this pick, they take uh, Trey Lyles. I think that you you had him with the Hawks. I have him with the Celtics. The Celtics are either going to go big or they're going to go with a shooter. And I think this is where Trey Lyles goes. I think that Jared Solinger should get out of Boston by the time we reach, I don't know, the end of the next season because I'm sick of him. I know he's a good player, but I don't think he really fits the system well, to be honest. Um and I think that Trey Lyles is a little bit better. That is, he's quite a bit better than Jared Sullinger. He's not as consistent, I would say, but he is less injury prone. He he's able to play the good minutes, and so I think I got Trey Lyles going to Boston and improving our looks on the future. I think the Celtics will go big, but I think they'll do that with their second first round pick. They're also picking at 28. I think it is. I think the second thing you said they were going to go for either a big man or a shooter. I think they address here. I have them taking RJ Hunter out of Georgia state. He is a very, very good shooter. He's good off the, uh, the pass. He's good pulling up. He's good, you know, dribble drive, pull up jumper. When you get a, a point guard like Isaiah Thomas, who is dry first, then kick out, you have to surround him with shooters. They have Jarebko. They have Olenek. Um, you also need a shooting guard who can score, which uh, Avery Bradley can't do. So I think true, very true. I think I think RJ Hunter is a good pick here. I think there are enough big men in this draft that the Celtics can go back at 28 or they can trade up into the more of the mid-20s with that 28th pick, and they can address that later. But I have them going R.J. Hunter and a shooter. Um, what are we at? At 16. I think that's a, that, that's, that's a fair landing spot for R.J. Hunter. See, I think that's too high for R.J. Hunter. I'm not very high on him. I think that, yes, he had a great, great tournament. But I don't – that's where his coming out party was. But I don't think he's going to be amazing or a great uh, player in the NBA. Either – if if – I honestly, if um, if Sam Decker is there, I want the Celtics to take him at 16. I think that he would be a better spot-up shooter at 16 that, uh, for Isaiah Thomas to kick out to because he can play small and uh, shooting guard. So I think he would be a better pick for the Celtics if, as a shooter, but I think that just Archie Hunter is just too high on that. 
I think Sam Decker will still be there, um, but I don't think they'll take him. Um, okay, so number 17 is Milwaukee. Surprise playoff team. They have a nice young core, but one thing they lack is outside shooting. And I'm gonna say this quickly, and then Niddle, you're gonna you're gonna ramble with this one, and you're gonna start the next one because I have to run and get my laptop charger. Um, I All think right. Sam, I think Sam Decker will go here. Uh, I think he's very similar to R.J. Hunter in that his coming out party was the tournament. He was always a nice catch and shoot guy, but he came out in the tournament, which is which is a little scary. But when you're picking in the mid first round, more towards the twenties, you can take that risk. I think Sam Decker would be a nice piece to stretch the floor to complement Giannis Antetokounmpo, who's still working on his outside game. I have Sam Decker joining J. Kidd and Antetokounmpo and the boys and those sexy new uniforms in Milwaukee. Now, middle ramble, I'll be right back. All right. So at number 17, I'm going to disagree with everything Josh just said. Um, I'm honestly going to go big with the, uh, the box. I think they're going to go Trey Lyles, the um, – not Trey Laws, excuse me. Bobby Portis, the power forward out of Arkansas. I think that he he's going to be a good player no matter where he goes. He's going to be a good role player. I, he's going to start on the bench for the Bucks no matter what, but I think that later on in the draft will be a better place for a shooting guard or a shooter in any shape or form for the Bucks. So I think they're uh, – Josh, I think they're going to go big. I think they're going to get Bobby Portis. <laughs> Can you hear me, Josh? What? Now now he can hear me. Okay. So um, I just rambled on about how I completely disagree with everything you just said. Um, I about Decker? That, I, well, I, I don't have Decker there in the first place, and I think it's too high for any other sh- uh, shooter. So I'm going Bobby Portis. I think that he's going to be a good role player behind Jabari Parker, and I think that he'll find his minutes in, in certain places. And he's great in the pick and roll game. He's great posting up, and so um, I think that he will play a lot in a better role as a big man than Decker. I mean, I since I have Decker gone, that makes it an issue for me. But either way, Bobby Portis, I have out of Arkansas. Uh, all right, I have Portis going a little later, but yeah, I mean, I'm I don't I, just, I don't think Milwaukee needs a big man. I think they're about whatever. Um, Either way. Okay. All right. So uh, coming up next, we have the. What do we have? I completely just forgot after I turned the page. Uh, uh, Houston. Houston, Houston Rockets. Good old Houston Rockets. Um, they got this pick, I believe, from New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, from New Orleans, and they have some holes around the uh, around the court. I personally think they're going to go small. They're going to go point guard. They need a point guard. Jason Terry does not cut it. Um, and I think that they are going to go with – I have two point guards in mind. Um, either one's going to go here or one's going to go my next one. I think I'm going to go Tyus Jones um, out of Duke, the freshman out of Duke. I know he has a lot of risk with him do with how he's so young. Nobody really expected him to be this good. Um, in in the top twenty of the draft coming into the season, however, he absolutely flourished in the in the tournament, and I think we saw how good he is on the drive, creating fouls, and he can just kick it out to James Harden whenever he wants because James Harden will love to shoot the ball, and he'll take that shot no matter what. I think Tyus Jones is a good pick for the Rockets. They need a point guard, and that's where I have him going. The, the, uh, the pick is going to be a point guard. If it's anything else, Darren Moe should lose his job. I had Tyus Jones here, and then I crossed it off because I thought about it. Tyus Jones plays young. It makes sense. He's a freshman. They need a point guard who plays older, who's not a freshman. I think this might have been the other point guard you were thinking about. He's from Notre Dame, and I think he makes a lot, a lot of sense for this Rocket team. I have Jerry and Grant going here a little higher than I thought I was going to have him go, but I think he would fit that system a, a lot nicer, a lot smoother than Tyus Jones. And there's a lot less risk with an older player. He's a senior, so he's he's consistently performed. You, I, I, you weren't there. I was with Alex Alex Levitt and uh, John Ryan. Saw him play in person against UMass at uh, Mohegan Sun in Uncasville. This kid's I was not invited. Be- because we hate you. Uh, no, it's, okay. 
Okay. This kid can. Th this kid has ice water in his veins. He showed it during the tournament. Uh, he's lethal from downtown. Not as lethal as Pat cannot, but I think he's a better fit for Houston than Tyus Jones. And there's a lot less risk taking the older player. That's a good point. But then again, the younger player has a lot more, has technically three more years more than if you really think about it theoretically, um, more than the senior to span out, pan out, whatever you want to call it. Either way. But, but the Rockets are built to win now. And I'm not saying that, that the, the three fewer years of experience will hurt them, but this team is built to win now because uh, Howard, big men's primes are always shorter. Uh, Harden, they have a window. They have a window with Kevin McHale, who's my, he's not going to coach forever. I think he's 67 already. They have a window, and I think having the older player would help them because as it was, they were three wins away from the finals last year. Even if the Clippers collapsed, they were three wins away from the finals. So I think this is a better fit than Tyus Jones, whose name we will see again very soon, at least on my list. Uh, we'll move on to a team that probably should have been a top two seed and then collapsed epically. We'll go down to our nation's capital and the Walla Walla Washington Wizards. We got going to Washington at 19. See, this is where I put Jerry and Grant. Um, as I wear my Notre Dame hat, expectedly, there, there's no day that I'm not wearing a hat as Josh can make. Uh, yes, there is, no, there is no day you're not wearing a hat. It's weird. That was not very – that was not very good English, but it's okay. Um, neither was that. Anyways, um, I am not an English major. I am a journalism major, which is a big difference. Um, not really. Anyways, <laughs> bottom line, I'm going to go Grant to back up John Wall. I think that he'd be a good role player. And I think that while, yes, I think they're going to spin Grant for another player in a few years, possibly big. But I think that as of right now, I'd put Grant uh, with the Wizards. All right, see, I think you need to go big here because your bigs are a little disappointing. Nene is old. And Paul Pierce won't be there next year. Paul Pierce will be gone. Uh, Nene is old and broken down and injury prone. I never thought he was that good, even with Denver. And Marching Gortat uh, is proving not to be worth the big contract you gave him. But this is where I have – I had to look for a second. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, I made – what did I do here? This is where I have – I have Rondé Hollis Jefferson – out of Arizona going here. I think he's going to – he's a small forward who can play power forward uh, if need be, so he can spell Nene for stretches. I think he's a perfect piece to complement uh, John Wall and Brad Beal, and he can step into that small forward role that Pierce is vacating because Otto Porter is not an NBA player at all unless he proves it, and he hasn't. He was a waste of a pick. And so I think – well, I would like them to go bigger, and I almost had Bobby Portis going here. Actually, I did, and then that's, that's why I drew some arrows. Um, I think they're going to go with the small forward to replace what they're losing in Paul Pierce. I really do. I, For God's sake, I want Paul Pierce back on the Celtics. I know it's not going to happen, but he's my favorite player of all time. So I want him back on the team. Anyways, moving on. Number 20, we're getting into the later part of this draft here. We're almost done, folks. Um at number 20, we have the Toronto Raptors going north of the bird border. And, Josh, who you got going to these Raps? Uh, this is where I have Bobby Portis going. Um, he, th th This could be a home run of a, of a pick, or it could be a single. Um, but Toronto needs bigs. Toronto needs everything, but they need they need bigs. Valanciunas is a great young piece. And Terrence Ross is not a great young piece. He's just okay. Uh, I, they need to get bigger. They need to fortify the middle. They need to do a lot of things. And it starts with taking Bobby Portis out of Arkansas. All right. I see that. But I think I'm going to go with your small forward. I think I'm going to take um, Ronde Hollis Jefferson out of Arizona. I think that he, as much as I know they need a big, I think that Terrence Ross is – not very good, and so I think they're going to go with Hollis Jefferson to fill in a spot and put Terrence Ross off the bench. Okay, all right. Uh, now we'll go to a team that was my finals pick to win it all, and that did not work because they traded for a certain Boston Celtic, and he just 
shit to bed. Um, well, we all knew that he wasn't going to be that yeah. good. So Yeah, I thought he might have been a better that fit. That was your own idiotic fault. I and did, now, okay, we, but, now the Celtics but, have Jake Crowder. That, but when I made the pick at the beginning of the season, they didn't have Rondo. We're, we're talking about the Dallas Mavericks, folks. Uh, their title window is closing quickly. They're old. Like, Monte might leave, and he's 31. Dirk is old, despite the fact he's an all-time great. And Tyson Chandler is old. So uh, who is going down to Big D uh, where no superstar will go to Mark Cuban's chagrin? See, I think this is where you find your replacement, starting to find your replacement for Dirk Nowitzki. As much as it's hard to replace him, I have K- Kayvon Looney out of uh, UCLA, the power forward. I think that he would be a good, a good player to come off the bench for the first few years behind Dirk Nowitzki. As long as he has left, they're going to start him no matter what. And after that, I think it's Looney going to take the starting role and Dirk is going to retire, going to the Hall of Fame, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I have Looney. The, my only problem why I didn't have Looney here is because Mark Cuban doesn't draft for the future. Mark Cuban drafts to win now, and this team can't draft for the future. Kevin, Kevon Looney would be a great pick if if they had that luxury. This team is built to win right now. They have to draft someone who can help them right now. I have Rashad Vaughn out of UNLV, the shooting guard. He's either going to back up Monte Ellis or he's going to start when Monte Ellis leaves. Or if Monte Ellis starts at point guard, then he'll start because otherwise they, there's no depth at point guard. Like they have JJ Barea, who said for that one finals against Miami is poop. Raymond Felton is poop. Devin Harris is poop. And Chandler Parsons doesn't play shooting guard. So I think right. I think th- they're drafting for now. Th- they are. So I have I have Vaughn going here. And I think that's that's fine. That's probably where he should in that range, in that beginning of the 20s range. I think he would be a nice piece for Dallas. And I think Mark Cuban knows that, and I think Cuban will take him. All right, so now we are getting into the team that just fired one of their best head coaches they've ever had just because they haven't won finals. And can't say I agree with them or not. Either way, we're talking about the Chicago Bulls, Chi-Town. Who you got? Um, so Kirk Heinrich has a negative player efficiency rating, which is gross. I don't know why, uh, Thibodeau was obsessed with him. I don't think Fred Hoiberg will. You need to go get another point guard and not re-sign Kirk Heinrich because if Derek, actually not, if when Derek Rose gets hurt, you want someone with tenacity. And this is where Tyus Jones fits. He's either going to learn under Derek Rose or he's going to play tenaciously with Pau Gasol and Joakim Noah when Derrick Rose is hurt or on the bench. I think Tyus Jones will slide to here, and he is a perfect fit for Fred Hoiberg's system and Chicago basketball. It, 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 it's a dream, dream pairing, and I think he will fall this far. And so I already had Tyus Jones going earlier, and I agree they need another point guard. I have Daylon Wright out of Utah going to the Chicago Bulls. I think that – his defensive styles is is one of the top defensive point guards in this draft, um, top defensive players in the draft overall. Um, he, he was an All-American. He was absolutely amazing for Utah, and I think that he's going to be great in the Bulls system. All right, so we will now head up to a team that made a big jump a couple of years ago and has not been able to make a jump since then and is in jeopardy of losing its best player. Uh, we're talking about the Portland Trailblazers. Who is going up to Portland? See, this is where we talk about they might lose LaMarcus Aldridge, um, and they have question marks in the scoring abilities. And I know that you took him a few picks ago, and I said it's way too high for him. This is where I put um, R.J. Hunter out of Georgia State. I know that Wesley Matthews is the shooting guard right now, but I think that Hunter will be a good fit for this team. I think that they need scoring. They need a lot more scoring, especially if LaMarcus Aldridge goes. I know I should take a big, but I'm not going to. Anyways, I'm going to take scoring instead. I know that Harrell is a good choice, but RJ Hunter, I have him going to the Trailblazers. See, you're right when you said it should be a big because Steve Blake opted back in West Matthews. He's either coming back or he's not uh, Aaron Aflalo who was hurt when they got him, but can score. He showed that 
he's probably going to opt back in or he's going to opt out and they're going to re-sign him. They have Lillard. like that. They have way too many guards. They need a big because Chris Kamen sucks, and they might lose LaMarcus Aldridge. They might even lose Robin Lopez. Who knows? This is where I have Kayvon Looney going. I think he is a player who either Aldridge stays and Looney has a couple years to learn, or Aldridge goes, the expectations are lower. Because unlike in Dallas, where right now it's championship or bust, if they lose Aldridge, Portland's expectations go a lot lower. They can live with the growing pains of throwing Kayvon Looney into the starting lineup and letting him take his lumps and learning as a rookie. I think he would be a perfect pick for the Trailblazers, and I think he will still be on the board when Portland uh, selects. All right, so moving on to your I, – I don't even know how to put it. The, the LeBron James show, the the, <laughs> the Easter I'm Conference back. champions. Okay, that's, that's another way to put it. Eastern the Eastern Conference, Conference champions. champions. Number 24 pick of the draft will be the Cleveland Cavaliers. You, you never know. Players can opt out. Players can opt in. You never know. Who's going to go? Like who's going to leave or who are they going to pick? Who are they going to pick? Oh, I think they're going to take uh... – Terry Ro- Rosier, Ro- Ro- Rosier, whatever. The, uh, I think it's Roser, but I don't know. Yeah. T- Terry Roser, the point guard out of Louisville. Um, I think we learned in these finals that if Kyrie Irving goes down again, the Cavs are screwed because Matthew Delavadova is not terrible. He's not good. <laughs> he's not. And Iman Shumpert and J.R. Smith have no balls, and they shriveled up. They they need another point guard. That's just plain and simple. They they just need they need they need someone who can play guard who can be consistent. And I think Rose Rosier, I'll call him Rosier, whatever. I think Rosier is a good pick there. Also, Shepherds are a restricted free agent. If someone offers like seven million a year, Cleveland can't match that with their cap situation. He's gone. J.R. Smith said he's opting out. LeBron wants him back, but we'll see if they bring him back. Even if LeBron says bring him back. Uh, personally, I wouldn't because Jr. is a cancer to the locker room, but LeBron can handle him. You're going to need a guard. You're also going to need – well, actually, no, you don't need a big – well, you, you might need a big because Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson could both be gone after this offseason. I, I would go point guard if I was Cleveland, and I think Roser, Rosier, whatever his name is, is a good, safe pick uh, for a team that is expecting to contend for championships. See, this is where – this is kind of a push for a point guard. Bless you. Uh, thank you. This is kind of a push for a, guard, a point guard, but I think that Rashad Vaughn out of UNLV will go here. Um, I, I think he'll be able to at least handle the ball um, while Kyrie is out. I think Rosier, that's, I know it's not especially too high for him, but I think it's just the fact that I don't really – I don't think he'll pan out with the Cavs. Um, I think that Rashad Vaughn – loves to shoot and I think he can handle the ball pretty well and he will be a good fit for as a backup to Kyrie. All right, so now we'll head to Memphis, a team that a lot of people thought would take out the Warriors. Uh they went up 2-1 and then they didn't take out the Warriors because their entire starting backcourt was out. Like the best perimeter defender in the league, Tony Allen out and their point guard an all-star, Mike Conley Jr., was also out. So, Niddle, who's going to Memphis to help them continue to make a push for that elusive championship? See, well, I know that they were both out. I'm still going to go with Montrezl Harrell, the center out of Louisville. I think that he he can always be a good help. To He's going to be – I know he's going to back up. He's going to back up um, Gasol and Zebo, but I don't see very – I don't see Zebo staying there that much longer. Um, and Gasol, they're both getting up there in age too. So either way, it's going to be iffy no matter what, but I think that uh, Harrow's going to go to the Grizzlies. I was tempted to go with a big man here, and then I thought about it. They're not losing Marc Gasol. If they, if they, the only chance they do is if he goes to San Antonio, and I don't think Duncan's done. So they're, they're not losing Gasol. They're not losing Zebo. I think Zebo's still got a couple productive years left. But losing their starting backcourt exposed the fact that that Beno Udrich is not a backup point guard. Beno Udrich is a bench warmer. This is, I think they need to go with a point guard here, and you have him off the board. I think this is where 
Daylon Wright out of uh, Utah will go. As you said, tenacious defender, was an All-American. He can step in and replace either Allen defensively or Mike Conley if either's hurt or if they're getting a spell on the bench for rest. I think if Memphis wants a chance to win a title with Gasol in his prime and with what Zebo has left, they, they need to go with a guard. They, they need to. Sure, should they probably find someone to replace Jeff Green? Probably, because Jeff Green is not that good. But I think Golden State showed that they need another guard. And I think Daylon Wright fits perfectly. You have him off the board, but I think he might still be there. And if he is, Memphis needs to snag him. So at number 26 now, we have four more picks left, people. Hold on. Number 26, San Antonio Spurs. I think they're going to go big. I think that they're going to. I, I'm so I, I I'm not a big fan of Splitter Tiago Splitter. I think they're gonna find a replacement for him soon, or he's gonna come in and fill for fill in for Tim Duncan when Tim Duncan gets his rest because we all know they rest him during the regular season. Pop loves to rest his starters during the regular season, so I think that Guillermo Hernan Gomez out of Spain. He played on the same team as um oh who am I thinking of? The guy from earlier. Um, Zanja? Oh my God, no, Porzingis. Sorry, I completely forgot. Um, either way, oh, okay. they played on the same team. Um, Hernan Gomez is a very good rebounder. He is great on the defensive side, and I think that would be a great compliment to this whole Spurs team as a whole. So I think that would be good for them. See, I, I felt weird not putting a foreign-born player for the Spurs to take like you did. Uh, <laughs> th- th- this is where I have Harold going because – I think that they might they might go with a with a, a guard because I think they're going to lose Danny Green. Someone is going to give him twelve million dollars a year. Someone will. It's going to happen. Um, but I think they will go big. I think Harrell is what is he's a Popovich guy. He's just going to go out there and give you everything he has. He could be the guy who helps Kawhi Leonard uh, bridge to a new era in Spurs basketball. It feels weird having them take some. Well, actually, is he American? What it feels weird having them someone. Having having them take someone who could be American, but I think I think I think Harold is a is a nice fit, and I think Tiago Splitter is probably going to get bought out, um, so they have some money. But I think he's got a he's a nice fit here. Um, Twenty seven. This is from a trade. I I forget who it's with, but uh, the Lakers are on the uh, the proverbial clock again. So who who is joining? Uh, uh, blah 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 blah. Oh God. Oh, yeah. oh. Okafer. Who is joining Okafer and Kobe in uh, Tinseltown, Niddle? Um, see, this is where I start. This by, by the end of this draft, I start getting really questiony about where I put people. Um, let me think real quick. I'm going through all my stats real quick. Um, I'm going to go with Anthony Brown, small forward out of Stanford. Um, He's going to be behind probably Wesley Johnson and Nick Young. Um, he's a big time uh, defender. He's great on the outside defense. He has a good, n- nice and big frame. Six eleven wingspan, thirty four point five vert. The six six uh, small forward out of Stanford, um, and he just loves to drain from the outside. So I think that he'd be a good fit for Kobe and the rest of this team. I have no clue what the Lakers draft strategy is is going to be behind Okafor. It might just be best available. I honestly have no freaking clue because they're looking ahead. In 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 Mitch Kupchak's mindset, it's already Westbrook, blankety blank, blankety blank, Randall. Oh no, Love and uh, Okafor. Like I don't Rondo. even. I don't, oh yeah, well I uh, I don't know if Westbrook and Rondo would be together, but regardless. Um, I think they're just going to go best available, which in my opinion is Justin Anderson, the small forward out of Virginia. For many of the same reasons that you said why they'll take a small forward, I just think Justin Anderson is is best available with his leadership qualities while they're looking to move on from Kobe. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what the draft strategy is going to be, but Justin Anderson, why not? I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> doesn't do anything for me. Um, next, so next pick, we got the second Celtics pick of the first round. Second Celtics um, pick. Who you got? You already had Celtics them, pick. You already had them going big, right? You had them Trey Lyles. Or who, I did. No, Trey I Lyles. had them. Uh, okay. Yeah, Trey Lyles. Who? Yep. Trey Lyles. So, All right. So you you said gonna, big man and a shooter. Is this the shooter? This is the shooter. 
and I turned my head around for a reason. I know it's way too early, and what? I'm dreaming. Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Wait, give me a second. Give me a second. He's a Boston kid. He loves the city. He loves playing base. Uh, I know he plays baseball and whatever. I'm talking yeah, about in, Pat. in Baltimore. <laughs> I, I'm talking about Pat Connaughton. I think he has a good future in the NBA while it's not first round potential. I think that the Celtics will say, screw it. We're going to take Pat Connaughton. <laughs> And I just want him on the Celtics because it's Pat Connaughton. So that's simple as that. I was watching the combine today on NBA TV, which I didn't even know they showed. I don't know why I was watching it. And I, they were playing a five on five game, and I saw Connaughton. I didn't even know he entered the draft. I thought he was just doing baseball, and that was it. Um, he's he's not a first rounder at all. He might not even. Be a I, I never rounder. said he's actually a first rounder. I don't know. I don't. I, said I just I want him. Know. I don't even know what that was. Um, you had you said they were taking a big man and a shooter, and you went Trey Lyles, and now Pat Connaughton. I don't even Jesus Christ, middle. That's just <laughs> that's not even a pipe dream. I had them. I had them taking R.J. Hunter, getting the shooter out of the way. This is where I think they'll go big. Um, I think they'll go with Raheem Christmas out of um, Syracuse. He is raw, but between uh, Brandon Bass, who they'll probably bring back on a one-year deal. Between Joannis Jarebko, uh, Kelly Olenek, and Sullinger, they have some time for Christmas to develop, whether it's in the D League or whether it's with the big club. He's not Fab Mello. I know people are like, oh, God, it's another Fab Mello. He's not. He's more athletic. I think they have time to let Christmas develop. And why wouldn't you want a guy whose last name is Christmas on your team? Like, why wouldn't you? Especially when – it's the Celtics and Boston people love Christmas. I don't know. Exactly. All right. So now we'll, we're going to get the other half of that, that first round pick switch. Uh, the team that should be here is the team with the second best record in the NBA during the regular season, the Atlanta Hawks. They switched with the nets because of the Joe Johnson trade. So Brooklyn, which is just a dumpster fire of a team is picking at 29. So who gets to join the dumpster fire out in, uh, in my, my hometown, I guess, technically. Not even close to your hometown, but anyways, I have Terry Rozier out of Louisville. I I still have him on my board, so I'm going to put him with the Nets at number 29. I think that he's going to back up Darren Williams, Deron Williams, however people want to say it, either him or Cliff Alexander, um, the, the power forward out of Kansas. No matter what, the Brooklyn Nets are screwed either way, so it doesn't matter. I think it's going to be either Rozier or Alexander, either big or small. That didn't help anybody out there, but it's okay. <laughs> um, the Nets between – I mean, they're screwed because you you don't get a difference maker at 29, and they have no cap room, so they can't go sign a free agent. So if you're Billy King, you have to hit a home run with this pick, or you have to try to hit a home run, and if you strike out, whatever, it was the 29th pick. I have with uh, Chris McCullough, I guess a hometown kid kind of out of Syracuse, a power forward, because if this kid – figures it out, he's going to be a double-double machine. He can block shots. He's athletic. He can hit the 15- to 18-footer. Billy King and the Nets have to go for a home run pick. Chris McCullough can be a home run pick. And if if he's not, whatever. It was the 29th pick. That That's that's the reality the Nets face is they need a home run or they're fucked, and they're probably fucked. But Chris McCullough. And with your last and final third, number 30 pick, the Golden State Warriors, who's going to play with the Splash Bros and the NBA champions? Well, before I say it, I have a question for you. Hmm. If Kyrie and Kevin Love are healthy, does Golden State still win the finals? No. Simple as that, no. What if, what if, what if no Kevin Love, just Kyrie? Does Golden State win the finals? Seeing as how the Cavs played even without Kyrie, I still say no. I think that the Cavs were just too too experienced and they had too much depth. And well, not they would have had more depth if they had Kyrie, I should say. Um and just seeing in that first game how close it was, if you put that in, in Oracle or uh, not Oracle Arena, the Q, is that what I'm thinking about? Right? Yeah, I think the Q is where it is Cleveland. If yeah. you're putting it if you if you put them in the Q Cavs win every time. So I think that the Cavs would have beat them with Kyrie Irving, especially since it won, went six. Also, like, if you look at it, like, 
if if Chumper and J.R. Smith hit 30% of their shots, they, they would have won. Cleveland was this in five. They, they were a lucky bounce at the end of game at the before overtime in game one for being up 3 0. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It, but, it was, either way. Uh, yeah, anyway, but th- that just shows Cleveland will be back. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it really doesn't matter who Golden State takes. They're so deep. Whoever they pick is not going to crack the rotation unless someone gets hurt. I mean, maybe he gets the five minutes a game David Lee gets because David Lee has already requested a trade. Doesn't matter. I have them taking uh, Jonathan Holmes. He's a stretch four slash three slash four out of Texas, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like they could trade this pick, and they probably will. It doesn't matter. Like it's like it's like it's like last year when the Spurs took someone at the end of the first half. It doesn't matter who they take. He's not going to play. But I don't know. Holmes is it? Holmes could be another splash brother for all I care. I don't know. Who cares? Who do you have? I'm I'm going to put Chris McCullough with with the Warriors. I think that I I don't like Festus Azili coming off the bench, to be honest. And I think that he can take Fessa Zizili's job. I think that the double-double machine that you were talking about, he can be a good fit for this Warriors team off the bench to give more depth. And I think that he's going to be better than Fessa Zizili. Number seven ranked uh, power forward in the draft. I think that he'll be able to be a good overall fit for this bench of the Golden State Warriors. And that will round out our draft. And yes, we are not doing the second round because because we're not. It's, we're, we're just because not. It's, because screw everybody that's watching. I mean, honestly, like this was hard enough. Like a half, not half, but like a, a fourth of these guys, I don't know that well. So this was hard. Uh, and doing, just so our viewers know, we were making this pretty much all up. Yeah, I have, we, I, I'll show it. I have this, we don't I have know this, what we're talking about. I have a little pad. I'm just writing stuff down. Ignore the hearts on it. It's my mom's. But uh, <laughs> little par- parting, parting shots. What, what is the last thing you want our viewers to take away from this? Could be related to anything. Doesn't matter. Um, parting shots, a shout out to Vanderbilt for taking the ne- game one of the college world series finals. Um, they're going to go back to back and I love ever since last year, because that's when I actually started watching college baseball, love Vanderbilt, love the way they play. Dansby Swanson is the number one pick shortstop going to the Arizona Diamondbacks. shout out to Vanderbilt and also shout out to USA women's soccer for getting the two nil. Is it, is it nail in soccer? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, because Fitzy always says one nil to the Arsenal, and I don't give two crafts about Fitzy in his, in his Arsenal wow. love. No, in his Arsenal love. Fitzy, you're awesome, but Arsenal, I can't stand. Anyways, um, yeah, that's about it. Man, you, uh, not, not, not man, you. USA Women's and Vandy, great day today. Okay, uh, I'm just I'm pulling up a name for my parting shot. Uh, where is it? 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 Ah, okay. For I have two. First of all, fuck you, Pete Rose. Like you just got caught. For the for our list, our viewers who don't know, outside the lines, ESPN's like investigative investigative reporters found documents that were sealed in the National Archives saying Pete Rose did bet on baseball as a player, which is no. So if you were even thinking, no, no. If you were even thinking of meeting with Rob Manfred to discuss coming back, like you're not, that's it. Like you're done. Your chance is done. I'm sorry. Is it as bad as PEDs? No, but this was an unwritten rule even before that. Um, You're screwed. You're not coming back. You might get banned from the all-star game now. Like that's, that's it. And shout out to, oh, here's her name. Hang on. It's coming up. Bear, Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh, where is it? Uh, in, the, in the meantime, while you're oh, looking I found it, I found it, I found it. Shout out to Melissa, shout out to Melissa Mayer for becoming the first female baseball player in history to be added to MLB's international prospects registration list. For those of you who don't know, um, that's the list that you can sign international prospects off. Tons of people apply to get on it every year. Like even people who don't play baseball, but people from foreign countries, they only actually add the people who have a chance to get drafted or signed by a team. Congratulations to Melissa. This is a huge accomplishment. She could be signed by a team starting July 2nd. Will she get signed? I don't know. Is it probably just going to be a PR stunt if she does get signed? Probably, but this is her first step to playing in the world baseball classic for France. So, I mean, that, that's an awesome story. That I, I'm rooting for her to get signed. And this is a lot less annoying than Monet Davis because Monet Davis just got really annoying real quickly. So congrats to Melissa Mayer. 
Um, in the words of Billy Joel, life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. And unfortunately, my friends, we have come to the part of the show where we must say goodbye. So for Mike Niddle, I'm Josh McCauley. I have Thank one you. more thing to say. Oh, come on. That was such a good closing. You had to ruin it. Well, we I don't care. Say. One more thing to say. Hashtag free Brady. Appeal goes on tomorrow. Free Brady. Okay. It's not going to happen because Goodell told I'm Troy making, Vincent. I can dream. I can dream. No, I'm just saying, like, for all you pitchers fans, Goodell delegated his power of punishment to Troy Vincent, but Goodell still had to sign off on the punishment that Troy Vincent came up with. Goodell is not going to overturn something he signed himself. That's 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 it's that's stupid. That's as stupid as saying it, that Brady didn't know about it. He did. There's no other way this would have happened otherwise. So I'm going to say it again. Are you done now, Middle? Can I say my thing? I'm done. It was really good. I, I, I'm done. I, I I stole this from Michael K. I don't even care because it's a it, it, shout out to Michael K. I love your show. It's it's, it's a great sign off. So in the words of Billy Joel, life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. And unfortunately, my friends, we have come to the part of the show where it is time to say goodbye. For Mike Niddle, who just interrupts everything, and he's also my roommate, so I love him. I am Josh McCauley. This has been the WMUA NBA mock draft. Tune in on Thursday to see if we were right, and if we weren't, oh well, it doesn't matter. Have a good night.